In this video, I'm going to show you a 6 million poly mesh running significantly faster without Nanite, LODs, or any culling software. Then, I'm going to show you how Epic Game developers are discontinuing support for important traditional optimizations in Unreal's newest systems. We'll debunk commonly referenced tests that misled developers by replicating the test variables and showing the context that was not revealed to users. Finally, I will present a visualization of how optimized scenery should be handled and the key balancing acts between detail and LOD transitions from an anti-aliasing perspective. On August 16th, 2023, I created a thread on the Unreal Developer Forums comparing the performance with and without Nanite on high density meshes. The first post includes third party experiences where Nanite caused slower performance for users. For almost a year, myself and others have been updating the thread with more tests showcasing the performance and visual drawbacks Nanite brings. Since its creation, the thread has had 27,000 views and Google now references it when you search for Nanite performance compared to LODs. Now, what you're about to see debunks some of the most popular myths you'll frequently hear from users on the forums, the UE subreddit, and test results provided by Unreal YouTubers. The first major lie was that enabling Nanite just made things faster. Thanks to our thread's widespread popularity, that notion is no longer as common as it was before, but has now been replaced with enabling Nanite only helps a mesh's performance if it has a certain amount of triangles. For example, Nanite might be slower on a mesh with a thousand triangles, but faster on a mesh with 5,000 or 3 million triangles. Here's a test that directly disproves that claim. We extracted the scene with over 6 million triangles from an 8th generation game we recently analyzed on this channel and imported it into Unreal Engine with a similar camera perspective. The 6 million poly mesh scene ran 50% faster without Nanite. And this is only the tip of the iceberg. This was a rough extraction where the camera angle was a little off and not all the meshes from the original scene were included, causing the scene to measure only one third of the frame's full geometric shading potential. If that didn't make too much sense, it will in just a couple of moments. But first, why was it faster without Nanite? The developers of 8th generation games prevented something called quad overdraw. Game objects are triangles, and every pixel has a sample position. When the inside of a triangle ends up beneath a sample position, the GPU uses power to draw it on screen. But this is not done for every pixel. It's done for every 2x2 two two pixels called quads. This means even if just one of the four sample positions detects a triangle, the GPU will leak performance by wasting power on the entire quad. So let's translate that new knowledge to what you're seeing here. This is the same test scene, but using Unreal's overdraw view mode. This gives you the context for comparing Nanite to LODs. Everything dark blue means the quads or GPU computation in that area of the frame was fully utilized. Light blue means a quarter of the GPU power was wasted. Dark green means half the GPU's computation was wasted. And light green means 75% of the GPU power was wasted in that area because the triangle was too small. For every underutilized quad, the issue can recur on the same quad when another object needs to be represented on those empty pixels, becoming a recursive problem. For a complex, arguably photorealistic scene, the results here are impressive. Out of the geometry of the screen, it looks like about 45% of the GPU quads were fully utilized, 35% of the quads wasted a quarter performance, and 15% of the quads wasted 75% GPU performance. This efficiency is thanks to the use of LODs. The first LOD, or LOD0, can afford higher poly counts because overdraw is less problematic at a close digital distance. However, as you move away from objects, the triangles get smaller, hurting quad utilization and requiring LODs to merge the small triangles. You can take things even further with better initial topology that organizes triangles to maximize surface area. This is something the industry standard Simply Gone handles to a degree, but Unreal's overly praised auto LODs don't do. Balancing this would involve not allowing sharp polygonal transitions between triangles and adding density in between to appear more natural. Speaking of LODs and overdraw, our studio would like to highlight the significantly underrated correlation between temporal aliasing, such as pixel crawl and shimmer, with overdraw. This means optimization in this area can have a major impact on the visual quality and motion by reducing the need for flawed TA. Without anti-aliasing, you can almost intuitively detect overdraw based on crawl and shimmer without a specific view mode like this. Earlier, I mentioned how we only measured one third of the frame's full geometric shading potential. This is because not all of our quads are shading geometry. For instance, each one of these meshes is 30,000 triangles, and we have significant overdraw on most of the screen. Nanite is still slower. In fact, it's slower than the total millisecond timing we had for need for speed geometry timings for an entire city. But let's really test surface area shading cost by activating all the quad sample points by placing a cube behind these objects. 
Without Nanite, the cube adds a 28% to geometric timings. But with Nanite, it adds 41%. Not only is there a linear increase in surface area shading cost, but it also has a higher base time, making it cost 50 milliseconds versus just a measly 11 milliseconds. By the end of the day, both of these will be multiplied by their material cost and the cost of their shadow methods, as they are not interchangeable. Virtual shadow maps are designed for nanite meshes. They are slower on traditional meshes and have casting issues at certain distances. Regular shadow maps can be very cheap if overdraw is contained, but they get overwhelmed by nanite's overdraw inducing detail. You can handle some pretty tough overdraw before starting to approach nanite, or really nanite and VSM level performance. Recently, it was confirmed that UE 5.5 supports skeletal meshes for nanite. First, you have Digital Foundry praising this feature, and then have a YouTuber share several misleading videos all over the Unreal community. He decided to grab some random skeletal meshes and enable Nanite on them, resulting in a jump from 15 to 50 FPS with Nanite enabled. First of all, he admitted to having no LEDs enabled. He had virtual shadow maps enabled, which Epic already documented as being slower on non-Nanite meshes, and he had no idea of what kind of extreme overdraw those skeletal meshes were inducing. This is similar to what's happening with upscalers. You compare an overhyped upscaler like DLSS to a worst case scenario like the common TA. Suddenly you have a solution to a problem that never needed to exist. Out of the several views he had, about 1% gave him issues about not including LEDs. So we made another video comparing 200 different copies of a 450,000 triangle mesh and then said he used Unreal's auto LED algorithm to make 4 LEDs per mesh. Again, he was using virtual shadow maps and Unreal's LED algorithm is not going to help a 450 triangle mesh with only 4 LEDs. It is not going to relieve overdraw at that distance, especially on the epic scalability which he mentioned in the video. So if his quad overdraw looks like this, he's wasting 75% of the GPU power across hundreds and thousands of quads on the screen. So of course, when he enabled Nanite, he got a performance boost. Before Nanite existed, every unique mesh and every unique material on screen would cause a draw call on the CPU. If draw calls get high enough, especially in complex scenes, they can cause serious performance problems. But draw calls don't exist for any mesh using Nanite. So you'll see developers use this as an excuse for complex open world scenes, but developers already had a way to reduce draw calls before, like merging unique meshes and their materials into one. However, developers can't fully take advantage of this technique, because merging meshes in Unreal means you merge the LED logic, screwing up how the scene manages overdraw as you move between previously separated objects. So you are forced to only merge objects close to each other instead of what you can predict will be loaded into memory together. A solution to this would be a system that combines these meshes you know will be loaded in memory together, their LODs, and their distance swap information in a similar format to meshlets. A system with the sole purpose of reducing draw calls, no data compression, no microcalling, or any of that. All the hardware listed on screen supports mesh shading, which could likely benefit from a system like this. Another major draw call optimization for meshes is instancing. This is very important for single meshes that repeat a lot, such as street lamps, fences, foliage, walls, procedural environment designs, or just objects that tend to appear in large quantities. Each instance can have its own coloring, position, and size. When a user on the Unreal Developer Forums pointed out that Lumen was problematic and incompatible with this traditional optimization to the main developers of Lumen, their response showed zero concern. They admitted to not working on support because they preferred inefficient nanite rendering. If you want genuinely good comparisons between nanite and non-nanite mesh performance, we have good news to share with you. The first post on the main nanite thread I mentioned earlier has been totally revised to include fast links to every test and experience related to this issue. No need to waste time scrolling through the 142 posts with toxic and ignorant perspectives on this subject. It will be continually updated to include more tests that provide overdraw information, millisecond budgeting, and the shadow type. Of course, this is as long as Epic employees don't lock the thread. As we stated in our very first video, Nanite will not prevent a pop-free experience. And even then, well-made LEDs can prevent popping along with good dithering use. Unreal uses a noise pattern for dithering that triggers after a certain distance. The reason why you don't want transitions constantly tied to the camera's perspective is because dithering causes overdraw. And now, like I said before, we can handle plenty of overdraw now with the hardware that we have, but if all objects are switching at once, we will get a lot of overdraw surface area on screen. Another issue with dither fades is draw call doubling, which can also be mitigated with faster transitions. Unreal's transitions are too slow to be subtle and are too animated in comparison with order dithering methods. The decimate engine is probably the best implementation of LED fading, so it's something we'll want replicated in more titles. 
We do not expect studios to spend hours of manual labor maximizing topology efficiency in million poly photogrammetry scans, or inspect models for optimum micro detail baking, or pay extra money for higher quality LED services over a one-click free solution they know they can get away with, or a free flawed LED algorithm. The only solution that can balance the simple efficiency studios get with Nanite and the performance offered by Overdraw Contained Scenery is an AI-trained solution for photogrammetry scanned for topology. Thanks to a recent video by Linus Tech Tips, they demystified AI as a program that is very good at recognizing and replicating patterns. What we need is a deep learning model that can analyze the original photogrammetry scans, including topology that follows the maximum area concept, depth bias and normal maps deriving from the original microgeo detail, and LODs that collapse subpixel detail based on overdraw. By continually feeding an AI the reference and the result goal, it will be able to produce overdraw friendly results that run faster than Nanite and look better than most cheap LODs. We already have RTX Remix doing more complicated guessing work from an algorithmic perspective on textures with less information. But more than anything, it would have to be free so companies wouldn't object to the workflow. Imagine the cost of paying 3D modelers to create hundreds of optimized variants for output reference. Not only would it be a lot of work hours to pay for, but it would also require high enough pay to keep the modelers motivated through extremely tedious work. It would need a sponsor. And at first, you might think AI games owe NVIDIA, as we just mentioned in RTX Remix. But NVIDIA's main selling point is the upscaling image quality king DLSS, which becomes a much needed band-aid when overdraw is out of control, since it reduces the impact of bad overdraw by reducing the amount of surface area, the resolution. And the situation with DLSS is getting worse. DLSS isn't just a performance band-aid anymore, we now have whole new visual problems in basic areas of rendering that require the more expensive version DLSS Ray Reconstruction to fix manufactured problems. NVIDIA is not ignorant. A couple of months ago, the main developer of TSR, Epic's in-house upscaler, mentioned that both AMD and Intel were very responsive in providing hardware optimizations for TSR through drivers and code. But NVIDIA was the slowest. I'll let you speculate why. But imagine, if AMD and Intel really wanted to dent NVIDIA's market value, it's not by competing in upscaling image quality, which AMD is very talentless in, it's by making upscalers as a whole less valuable and needed on modern hardware by sponsoring the development of quick and efficient optimization tools. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you learned something valuable. Please give us a like and subscription and comment your support, questions, or feedback to keep the YouTube algorithm on our side. Share our videos on any popular Discord server with a videos channel or any game-related subreddit since those two platforms prevent self-promotion but really help us reach more views. Well, that's it for today. If you haven't, please watch this video as it's hands down the most important video on the internet regarding the manufactured visual problems and fake optimization in modern games. Until then, thank you very much for your continued support.